just um, GPS, just monitor where I go. If there's an emergency and I need to go to the store, you know, it's late after curfew or something, I would be able to do that without. I tell you what, I will uh, strongly con consider giving you tracking if you give me a UA today that's negative. In this video, Judge Boyd is concerned about this defendant's ability to care for her children so Judge Boyd makes a call to CPS and pre-trial. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to catch the beginning of this hearing because the judge forgot to turn on her mic. Thankfully, we were able to get most of it. So, let's get into the video. Pre -trial. One time when she and the uh, uh, victim in this case were both in jail at the same time. Apparently, they had some conversation while they were in jail. Other than that, there's been no contact with them. All right, tell you what, this is what I'll do. I'll uh, consider your motion, but I'll consider it after Fiesta. Fiesta is upcoming, so after Fiesta reapproaching, the court will con strongly consider it. I think the court seems completely unreasonable. She may have made it a little fun, your mother. <laughs> I understand the court. Yes. I will come back. Yes. And then we, we can see that after Fiesta. Can I ask if it be just um, GPS, just monitor where I go? And so what, it can see on the still, river walk and it can, at Fiesta? It can see where I'm at, you know, but I, I can still be free, you know, to like, if there's an emergency and I need to go to the store, you know, and it's late after curfew or something, I would be able to do that without. I tell you what, I will uh, strongly can get consider giving you tracking if you give me a UA today that's negative. You want to do that? The answer to that, Your Honor. You want to do a UA today? No. All right. So do not come back at the fiesta because obviously if I get a UA, that UA is not going to be clean. And you should be doing some sober meetings because you shouldn't be taking care of your children when you're using, what are you, what, we're off the record. What are you going to be positive for? All right. And who is here with you? Who are you, sir? Michael Chen. Do you live with her and her children? Why are you here today? Why are you not at work? Do you have a job? You should probably be out somewhere looking for employment. That's how best you can support people. Because right now, because you don't have employment, guess what? Somebody else is supporting you. And how old are you? 21. I'm sorry? 21. You're 21 and somebody is supporting you, a grown adult, because you're coming here to support her. Have you been around her children? And if you were drug tested today, what are your tests going to be? Tell the truth, shame the devil. What is your, your result going to be? Yeah, so I got two adults using around children. No. And you know what? Your curfew is going to get tightened up because obviously something else is going on. What's her curfew? What's your curfew time? 6 a.m. to 7 p.m. Well, that's going to stop. And are, do you have employment, really? No, I do not have employment. Yeah, I so, would like employment. I live in almost in the middle of nowhere, and my vehicle. Whenever I got arrested, I had just bought from a girl that I met, and uh, I met her in rehab. And we lived at the shelter together, and I wasn't able to get the title to it. Um, when I got out, my I had my vehicle still, but it wasn't legal, and I don't have my vehicle anymore because using it, it's it's gotten impounded and the girl that I bought it from, he, I can't get a hold of her. Yeah. And I'm, uh, all right. So here's the thing. Uh, how old are your two children? Anna is seven and eight and four. And I also have a nine year old. She lives with her dad. I'm just here to be completely honest. You know, I do, I do want help. I do want recovery. This isn't what I chose. When I got arrested, I was, I had just had one year sober. I've been sober for a year on crimes that I did not commit. My life has been really hard. I was in there for five months. I spent a, the first week not knowing who, what, when, where, why I had these charges. And so I'm not trying to use that as an excuse or anything. I'm just saying it's been very tough. I looked in the shelter when I got arrested. <laughs> when I got out, I had nowhere to go. I'm looking even to be out. My, my, my bond was so high. 
and I had met these people right before I got arrested. I only met them once. They offered me a room, you know, and they helped me get out of jail. And it all turned out to be under guise for something else. And I no, I'm talking about how old are you? I'm 28 years old. Why would you? You meet some random people. I was in jail. And you then start living with them and you have children with you. They weren't completely random. I just didn't know them all too well. And are your children physically living with you? Yes, ma'am. And where are your children right now? They're at school. All right. So. I will do anything and everything. I oh, require. what you're going to do is you're going to have a seat right over in that box. Could somebody please pick up the phone, call next door to Child Protective Services so that we don't have somebody who's high on meth with marijuana taking care of children. Could, could somebody pick up well, everybody? I don't remember the number. I don't, I haven't worked over there in so long. I think it's 335-627 uh, something. But she needs treatment and... I can't, I can't have a seven-year-old and a four-year-old living with you. You're using meth and marijuana. You have a boyfriend here who doesn't have a job who's using meth and marijuana, which you shouldn't even have in your life. Excuse me, sir. Did you drive her down? All right. She can, you can give her change for via bus or something, but you all should not be together because you are enabling each other. I don't need a bus in it. I'm sorry, what? I don't. I will, I will get her home. You don't have to do that, Mr. Young. I will. Thank you, Mr. Young. So what we're going to do is I'm trying to get you help, trying to get your children help. So we're going to get a CPS worker to hopefully get help for her and her children yes, and get you drug treatment because you need all of that. And I can't do, there's only so much I can do with your cases because they're aggravated robberies. I can't refer you to felony drug court because you're not under my jurisdiction for that. But you need help and your children need help. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. All right. Because the last time you use may be the last time you use because you never know yeah. what you're getting. You're right. Okay. All right. So I'm going to have you uh, remain in the courtroom, Mr. Young, and we'll see if we can get her some help and get her children some help. Thank you, Mr. Young. Are we released in your own? Well, she needs to remain in the courtroom. I know that. Yes. Yes. I'm not going anywhere. Yeah. Are we, are we going to trial? No, we're release. not going to go. Well, I don't want to send you to trial today when she is positive for drugs. So, I mean, that's not an excuse for everybody, but obviously there are more things going on with the positive for drugs, trying to see what to do with her children who are in school. So she's not going to be going to trial today. Thank you, Your Honor. All right. Thank you. But she's not in custody. Is that correct? No, she's not in custody. Mm -hmm. In the box? In the box. Yes, in the box. Thank you. Okay. Oh, so, Miss. Yes. Oh, I thought that was okay. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> oh, I was. All right. So, on Miss Richards' case, cause number 2022CR3725A. And uh, 2022 CR 3726 B. So uh, we've already had someone speak to her about helping her with uh, the minor children who are in her care. But what I need is for somebody from pretrial services until CPS is actively uh, in her case with her safety plan, if someone can make sure that they go out uh, to visit. Uh, her home to make sure that the children are okay. And my understanding is that the children are going to be picked up from school today and everything is going to be explained to them about the uh, family-based services. Is that correct? Yes. But uh, if I could get somebody from pretrial services to go out to her home um, today, uh, Wednesday and Thursday, at least until actively in the family-based services plan to make sure everything's okay with the children. And I know that they will, oh, that's from the Zoom. And I know that um, they'll help her with drug treatment as well. 
y'all could coordinate with CPS once CPS gets involved, that would be great. So is that doable? Uh, yeah, I, I have to just work some things around because I have a baby at home. Oh, no, no, no. I, I understand. I could <laughs> yeah. the baby in the background. Yeah, I'm sorry. Just trying to mute so you don't hear them. Oh, no. It's always great to hear babies. <laughs> That's the only time they'll listen to you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but if you all could do that to make sure that the children are okay and coordinate with CPS and once CPS starts their family-based service with her being in treatment everything I think everything will work out hopefully okay yeah that's fine and um is there a contact number for them yet Barbara? All right. And so if you all can stay uh, in the waiting room and there'll be a contact number that I'll give you all for CPS as well. OK. OK. And so if CPS is actively, then who knows, you may not be able to go out there if they're if they've already started the process and everything is taken care of today. Yes, ma'am. Right. Thank you all so much for zooming in on such uh, late notice. Pre-child services to you guys are great. I appreciate it. Thank you, ma'am. All right, so I'll, what I'm going to do is we'll recall it back. Can we recall this back on the 24th? All right, we're going to come back on the 24th, and I'm going to see where you are. People can only help you as much as you want to be helped. I overheard you saying that you've been in felony drug courts before, and I know that's a great program. Yes, you couldn't. It. Yeah. So you've... You got to do better. It wouldn't be charged. I would have completed it successfully. And you tell me where I would have been. But see, here's the thing. Uh, things happen in everybody's life. Everybody's life goes through ups and downs. I don't know anybody on the planet whose life is always up here and they never had any problems. Okay. Other than John Young, your attorney. But people, you know, things hit you. Waves hit you. But when waves hit you, the answer is not, let me go back to what I know. When what you know is not great for you. The answer is, yeah, all you had to do was pick up the phone, call your sponsor, and you should have one and say, hey, this is what's happened to me. These charges are not, um, you know, good charges. I didn't do this. I don't know what's going on. I feel like I'm going to use. Then your sponsor will tell you, no, what we do is these are the steps we take. We don't start using. So don't blame your problems on someone else. The, the um, choices that you make. Those are not to be blamed on somebody else. You're right. And I'm not proud of them. Yeah. And I'm being honest. I do want to help. Yeah. Well, we're going we're gonna to see what's happening. Uh, Ms. Ferguson. Oh, show. All right. Can you give her a reset form for April 24th? So we're going to recall you back on April 24th. And when you come in here on April 24th, I want you to be clean. Do you understand? Yeah. And she's going to remain on GPS. And on the GPS monitor, I am not doing that. You said it was 6 a.m. to 7 p.m.? I that's what she said. We're not doing that anymore because that's not working for you. You understand? So um, I'm going to put her curfew, and your curf curfew is going to be 7 a.m., I believe she puts the kids on the bus at 7 a.m. So I think she has to leave. But I think they're going to do a family-based service plan. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So we're going to do your curfew from 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. And if there's some sort of violations of that, let me bring them back in. Sorry to bring you back, guys. So on Samantha Richards, I'm going to change her curfew. To seven, I'm going to change her curfew to 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. Now, uh, her attorney is telling me she has to put the children on the, on the school bus. So I'm giving Child Protective Services a week to get the family-based services plan worked out. So if there is a violation of GPS for this week and next week, and if it's because she's dropping children off at school, don't file it. 
Uh, but after the 24th, if there's some more issues, then I'll ask for you to go ahead and file uh, violations on her. Because Child Protective Services is trying to work through getting the children with a different relative, getting her in family-based services. So her curfew is going to be 7 a.m. to 4 p.m., Monday through Friday. That's it. And our school's off for Battle of the Flowers. All right, so she shouldn't be going anywhere on Battle of the Flowers Day because school is out on Battle of the Flowers here. So that Friday, she shouldn't be going anywhere. And then I'm going to reset her for April 24th. And at that time, I'll know what Child Protective Services is doing. And I'm still working on getting the phone number for you guys. Yes, ma'am. So are we doing this up until Child Protective Services gets involved? We're yes. doing home visits every day? Yes. Until the, the children have been taken, uh, well, been placed with other relatives. And... You know, as I said before, you may not have to go out there. I'm just waiting um, for the person who's here to give me a number so that you all have a number. So you may be able to call to check to see if it's been done. But even with calling and checking, I want at least one visit to our home, even if Child Protective Services is taking things over, because we have a boyfriend who's using it as well. They say they don't live together. and They probably shouldn't be living together. Thank you. All right. uh, Barbara, do you need anything else with Ms. Richards? Okay. Receive the reset. I think Judge Boyd made a good call here. It's obvious these parents are not clean. It sounded like CPS is going to have the children placed with family members, and until that happens, pretrial is to make daily home visits, which they didn't sound very happy about. I'm sure it's very overwhelming for pretrial, but it's for the best interest of the children until they are able to be placed with family. This defendant's next hearing is on April 24th. I'll make sure to catch that hearing. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.